Well, hello friends and welcome back to the channel and welcome to fall. Fall is upon us, can you believe it? It is the first week of September and we are smack dab in the middle of our first week of school. So far, so good. You know, they joke and say like by day two, you're over it. I don't feel that yet. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. We, uh, we're just jumping in the curriculum and today is nothing special. We're doing a regular day in the life. Me and the kids are doing homeschool and then probably some cooking in there. I've got a fall recipe I wanted to share with you guys later for dinner. I've shared it on my channel before and it's a delicious uh, sausage and sauerkraut soup and it's so good on these fall crisp cool days and i think if we get around to it i have a fun little crafty uh, fall art project that i wanted to share too and you guys know me i don't really like to do crafty things but occasionally i get the itch and i get in the mood so this is something that's super simple super cheap doesn't require much and anybody can do it and it makes the most adorable little decor piece for your fall season. And Joe is gonna be working on some projects on the homestead. He has been diligently working on the addition to the cabin. I shared a short with you guys yesterday about the progress of the addition and he's just plugging away. He's a beast. So we're kind of multitasking today. I'm in here with the boys doing school, doing some cooking and Joe's outside working on the addition, but we're gonna take you guys with us. All right, so where did we leave off last lesson? Do you guys remember what we learned about? Kind of. Good. When Noah put all the animals on the ark. Yep, and how many of each kind of creature did God have on the ark? He had cats. Well, how many though? Like how many elephants? You remember? How many of each kind? Seven. Two. Why did God need two of every creature on the ark? So they could repopulate. So they could repopulate. So you need a boy and a girl, right, Callan, to make babies? Mm -hmm. So God needed a female and male of every creature on the ark so that once the flood water went away, they mm -hmm. could repopulate the earth. How could it rain for 40 days and 40 nights without even stopping once? God was powerful enough to create the heavens and the earth and to put water above and under the earth. So we know he could also make it rain just by telling it to. Everything in the universe does exactly what God tells it to. Matthew 8, 27 says, But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him?
says follow this order when simplifying expressions. So you always work like you're reading a book, so left to right, right? So like when you're looking at a math problem, you always work left to right, but here's some exceptions, okay? So you do what is in parentheses first, we know that. So you always do what's in parentheses first. And then next, do multiplication and division, and then you do addition and subtraction last. So remember that, that's the order your math problems should always be done in, okay? Oh, you're almost done with your talk. Was that pretty easy for you? Yeah. 27, 101. Um, so how many are on this one, Callum? 10. 10, so it should be 110, mm -hmm. not 101, right? Let's flip over to here and I'm gonna give you some money, okay? And I'm gonna have you count your money. So, let's review, okay? These are dimes. What are these? What's that called? Nickels. A nickel. And what are these? Pennies. How much is a dime worth? Ten. And a nickel? Five. And a penny? One. Okay. When we count money, we always count the one that is valued the most first, okay? So we would count the dimes first, then the nickels, and then the pennies, okay? All right, so count your change, add it up, and then write your answer up here. 30. Thirty-five. Good job. Forty. Mm -hmm. And then. And now we're counting ones, so we know we have forty cents. Forty-one so, mm -hmm. and forty-two. Very good. Good job. You got part of it right because the way that you find an average is you first add up all the numbers that they give you, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think you forgot the next step to finding your average. Do you remember or not? Okay, that's what I thought. So you did good here. All these numbers together equal 25, right? Mm -hmm. How many numbers did they give you? Count the numbers. Five. Five. Oh yeah, and then I do five plus 25. No. And over here, you're gonna work a division problem. 25 divided by how many numbers they gave you, which is five, right? So go ahead and do that. So 25 divided by five will give you how many pumpkins that they gathered, okay? Five. Times. Correct. So what's your answer? You finished five. the problem. Five times five is 25, which would be zero, right? So your answer is five. Five what? Average. What's the question? Five pumpkins. Five pumpkins, there you go. Minute hand and mm -hmm. the hour hand. And which one's faster? Minute hand. Good. Do you remember what I told you about how many hours are in a day? Do you remember the number? 25. Oh, so close. It's 20 something. 26. 24. 24. There's 24 hours in a day. You ready? What time is it? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Good. How about this one? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Good. In the morning hours, the time is called a.m. So it would be 8 a.m. or 10 a.m., okay? So if it's in the morning, it's a.m. If it's in the afternoon, like lunchtime or the evening when we have dinner or bedtime, it's, it's p.m., okay? So morning is a.m., afternoon and evening is p.m., okay? So if this is, t and remember what we talked about yesterday, mm -hmm. we have two 12 o'clocks, don't we? Mm -hmm. We have one in the middle of the night when we're sleeping, which is the start of the new day, so that's technically the morning, technically mm -hmm. a.m., even though it's dark, mm -hmm. right? Unless you live in Alaska when it's light 24 hours in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then you have a 12 o'clock again at lunchtime, mm -hmm. which is p.m., so we have two 12 o'clocks, okay? Mm -hmm. So if this one, is in the middle of the night and you get up to go potty, would that be a.m. or p.m.? In the morning? Mm-hmm. That would be p.m. Are you sure? Oh, a.m. A.m., correct. If you go to bed at nine o'clock at night, is that a.m. or p.m.? 
and uh, it's PM. PM, good job. Yep. So we're working with coins, so we're working with cents, right? We're not working with dollars. Dollars would have a symbol like this, okay? Cents has a symbol like this. Remember, it's like a C with a line through it, mm -hmm. okay? A pen. Am or is in my bag. Which one sounds right? A pen am in my bag or a pen is in my bag? Is. Very good. There's a silent E at the end, so the U is long. It says ooh. So what word is that? Flute. Very good. That's a musical instrument. Flute mm. rhymes with what? Suit. Very good.
All right, we are finally done with school. <laughs> so we're doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, language arts, math, and reading. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do science and history. So today was, we call them the harder days because math and language arts always takes us longer to get through. And Parker is in sixth grade this year, you guys. He's graduated from elementary to middle school. How in the world did that happen? And like I told Parker, before the week started, I was like, look, you're in a bigger grade. Your work's gonna be a little bit harder. Your lessons are gonna be a little bit longer. And uh, they sure are. So, but the boys both did really good. And I just fed them lunch. I'm gonna come out here and kind of check on the progress, see how Joe's been doing this afternoon. And then I think I'm gonna head in and start dinner and cut up some of these oranges and lemons. I'm gonna make this cute little garland today and see how it goes, I don't know. I've just been feeling all like fall vibey and stuff. Got my little decorations out and I think it'd be really fun for the kids to help me with that too. I might even ask Joe if he could cut just some little birch rounds for the boys and let them paint them like little pumpkins or something and uh, let them just feel kind of artsy crafty. You know, that's as good as it gets for me. You guys know I'm not like artsy kind of person. Every once in a while I get a little creative bone in my body, but let me go see how Joe's doing out here. Okay, Joe, making it happen up in here. Look at this. Oh, the vaulted ceilings. So we've taken the advice of some of you. Uh, you guys always leave some of the best suggestions down in the comments. And originally when Joe and I were gonna build this addition, it was going to be a walk-in pantry slash storage room. And this addition itself, was going to be that space we were going to turn this into the pantry with like countertops for like all the big kitchen equipment like crock pots and um, food dehydrator and all the things that we don't have room for in the house and then we were like reading comments from you guys and you guys were like why would you have the pantry in the back of the house where everybody has to walk through your master bedroom to get to the pantry and i was like Oh, that's like a really good point. <laughs> we just never thought about it. I just needed the space and I didn't care how I got it. But I was like, that totally doesn't make sense because I don't want the kids and if we have company over and they need to come grab something out of the pantry uh, to have to walk through my master bedroom to get to that, right? Your bedroom is kind of like your private space. So we switched it. And this addition has now become the master bedroom. And what is our current bedroom is going to be the pantry slash big, huge storage space. And then somebody was saying, actually a couple of you were saying in the comments, well, that's a really big pantry. Like, do you really need all that space for like food and stuff? And while I need a lot of space because we do a lot of canning and stuff like that, no, I do not need a whole bedroom to be my pantry. So we've come up with a new design based on some recommendations from you guys. And I am so grateful because this is gonna suit our family and our needs so much better. And uh, basically what is our current master bedroom will become two things. It's going to be a walk-in pantry off of the kitchen and then you're going to have an opening. We're going to put up a new wall that's almost going to divide the bedroom in half but not quite. Like the pantry will be a little bit smaller but it's going to almost divide the current bedroom in half and then you'll step into what's going to be like my office space which you guys I desperately need that. I'm used to having an office space with my desk where I do my podcasting, working on my YouTube stuff, paying bills. I keep all my homeschool curriculum and everything stored in there. And right now I don't have an office space and that's been tough. And even for doing live streams with you guys, uh, I normally have a space to do that and I don't have that anymore unless I'm just sitting at the kitchen table or whatever. So we're essentially gonna have this cute little walk-in pantry that's still gonna be long and big with shelves and countertops all the way around. Uh, for food and then I'm gonna have a nice little office space that will also house like Joe's gun safe and some of the bigger items that we really don't have room for right now and then you'll walk from the office space into our master bedroom essentially and I love it because we're kind of pushed back at the end of the cabin you know it's kind of like Little House on the Prairie 
there's not a lot of privacy in this cabin. Remember like Ma and Pa Ingalls, how the kids were in the loft upstairs and then Carrie eventually was sleeping in their bedroom downstairs with her bed? Well, it's kind of like that here with Ma and Pa Watson. <laughs> so the boys have their room upstairs, which is a loft. It does not have a front wall on it. So at night when the boys go to bed, especially during the school year, Joe and I, turn all the lights off, do the dishes, like shut down the house basically. And we come into our bedroom and shut the door for the evening. If we're gonna do work, play on our phones, watch a show, whatever. Uh, we do it in our room because if we were doing it in the living room, we would keep the boys up all night because they're in the loft. So to make it quiet out there, we come to our bedroom when they go to bed. So, and you know, like some other things and stuff. There's <laughs> no privacy and stuff like that. Um, I say that to say, and I know a lot of your children watch our channel, so I'll leave it at that, but I'm super excited that the master bedroom is like disconnected. Like it's not disconnected, it's connected, but it's all the way in the back of the cabin and you have to go through the pantry and our little office space to get to the master bedroom. So there's a little bit more privacy back here. And I really like that. Some have asked why on this wall, um, we're not doing a bigger window. So the, doing the lights. Yeah, so the original plan, which is still the plan, is to take this window that is in our current master bedroom and put it there, and then this is gonna become the door that leads from the office space into our new bedroom. And we wanted to repurpose the window and not get rid of it and have to buy a new one, so that's the window that's gonna go there. But I have some super cute ideas for like some antique shutters to go on the side. And then also I have in my Amazon cart currently some really cute things. One of which is some, uh, they're gonna be these hard wired like nightstand lights that are super cute that are gonna go on the side of our bed. So even though right now the window looks a little small on this wall and I agree it does, once the cute little antique shutters are on there and the nightstand lights are on the wall, and you've got the bed with the nightstands, it's all gonna even out. And then we do have a bigger window over here on this side. So the big window, the smaller window, and then as you guys know, we have a door with window panes in the door that's gonna go right here. So there's just gonna be a ton of natural lighting in here, which I'm super excited about because in Alaska, especially in the winter, we don't have a lot of light. So to bring in as much natural light as we can is kind of the goal. So. Yeah, I'm very excited that this room is gonna be nothing but our bedroom. Just our bed, our little nightstands, maybe our little tiny dresser, um, and it's just gonna be super cozy and super cute. So really quickly, I've actually had several people ask me in the comments section, and I even received an email today, and somebody asked if I could show how I use my French press coffee maker. Now, Joe and I started using a French press coffee maker, which is, you know, this thingy here with the little, I just washed it, so hold on, it's got, it's a little wet. With this little thing that you put on the top, and then when you're done steeping it, you push it down, and you uh, you drink your coffee. So we started using a French press coffee maker, I'd say three years ago or so, and the, the main reason that you use a French press is that the coffee grounds are allowed to steep longer before drinking it, and so it just makes for like a more robust, flavorful cup of coffee, and for me, there's something like, I don't know, a little old fashioned about it, I guess. It's just a little different than just pushing a button on a coffee maker. You don't have to worry about buying filters and stuff. You literally just need the French press, some hot water, and your coffee grounds. So there's really not much to it. The French press that we have holds about three cups of coffee. Like when Lexi comes over to visit, I can make one French press and then her and Joe 
and I can all get a cup of coffee out of it. If you're somebody that drinks coffee all day long, maybe a French press isn't for you just because you've got to clean it out every time and make more coffee. I've got my water heating in the background in my little glass kettle that I love. I'll link that for you guys for the coffee. That's what that sound is. But Joe and I typically drink two cups of coffee a day, one in the morning and then one right about now in the afternoon when I get done with school with the boys. And I have recently switched over to decaf mostly unless we're out and about and we get a coffee like from the coffee shack. Because of my tummy troubles, I have switched over to decaf. Coffee is acidic and so with the issues I'm having with the esophagitis from the acid going up in my esophagus, it's um, I'm just trying to lessen like the acidity. So I have switched over mostly to decaf because decaf coffee is less acidic than regular caffeinated coffee. So I'm gonna turn you guys around and I'm gonna show you really quickly, really quickly because making coffee in a French press is just that easy, how I do our coffee every day. So the first thing you do is add your coffee to the French press. Now I found with decaf, I need to add a little bit more because it's not very strong. But if you have regular coffee, you could probably do three scoops, but I typically do four when I'm doing decaf. After you put your coffee in the French press, all you do is put some nice hot boiling water in there. So you fill it up and I leave about, I don't know, I'd say an inch to an inch and a half at the top. That way you can easily put the lid in there without it overflowing. So that's pretty much all there is to it. The French press is super simple, like I was saying. You wanna let this steep for at least four minutes. You don't wanna push this lever down yet until it's had at least four minutes to steep. You can steep it longer if you'd like, but I usually do about four to five minutes. So while the coffee is steeping, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this fall DIY craft project that I just got a wild hair to do out of nowhere. <laughs> I actually got the original idea from Pinterest, but I did switch it up a little bit um, based on some of the supplies I had and some of the supplies I didn't. So the first thing you're gonna do is get some fruit. You can use oranges, lemons, apples, cranberries. You can really use anything you want, you guys, for this. We're basically doing a beautiful fall garland to go over my kitchen window, and we're going to just dehydrate this fruit in the oven for a few hours at 225, and then we'll be ready for the next step. So just lay your fruit out on parchment paper on a couple cookie sheets, but just make sure you leave a little bit of space in between each one. That way they dry out properly. Now you don't have to do this step, but I thought, hey, why not? Uh, I'm adding cinnamon to the top of these oranges because I figured once it's done drying in the oven, it's gonna give it a delicious, citrusy cinnamon smell which just screams fall to me so i decided to do cinnamon you don't have to but i think it looks really pretty too So like I said, we're just gonna pop these in the oven at 225 for about three hours. Now, don't throw away the ends of your fruit, you guys. You can make a super easy, kind of like a natural potpourri for the house for the day. So I'm just adding all the ends to a pot, adding some water to this, and then I'm gonna put it on the stove on like low medium, and I'm gonna add a bunch of goodies to this, and it's just going to scent the entire house. I'm adding some clove, some cinnamon sticks that I had, and then I'm gonna give it a good stir and then turn it down on low, and it's just gonna simmer all day, and the house smells like Christmas. It is so wonderful. I 
I lost track of time, so it's been actually about 10 minutes or so, but the coffee's ready. All you do is push down your little lever there, your little handle, whatever you wanna call it, pour your coffee, and that is all there is to it. I'll link this stainless steel French press for you guys in the description of the video. Try it out, it's super easy, and it makes delicious coffee. As usual, I will link this recipe for this sausage sauerkraut soup in the video description. It's a really easy dinner, a one pot meal, makes amazing leftovers, and it's good for you. It's loaded with good ingredients. Sauerkraut is very good for your gut, and it's just great, like I said, for the fall season when it's a little crispy cold outside. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm cooking, I have to clean the kitchen as I go. It is just a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> so I'm constantly doing the dishes. I probably do dishes like three or four times a day, but it makes it so much easier at the end of the night after dinner. I don't have like counters full of dishes to do, just simple dinner dishes. So I always clean as I go. Halfway through the baking time on these oranges, you wanna flip them over so they dry evenly. And you guys, I, I wish I could convey through this video the smell of the house right now. I just can't explain it any other way with the soup going and the fruit in the oven. It just, it smells like Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner. It's just fabulous. In the evenings, the kids get their chores done. They have chores Monday through Friday, and then seven days a week, part of that is taking care of the animals. They feed the sheep, water them, take care of the chickens and such, collecting eggs and all of that. But we are all a member of the household, so we have a very age-appropriate chore list for the boys, and they're really good about knocking them out. They do make a little allowance every week, you know, just as a thank you for their efforts, but it really helps me out. Just like a ball. Good. But 
it is but is it is it S M says sm small small but is it small good job Anyway, there were no landmarks, so he could not have told where he was going even if he could have steered it. God was able to guide it wherever he pleased, and he was able to make it stay in one spot no matter how hard the wind blew. One day, the ark stopped rocking on the waves. The water had gone down until the ark settled on the ground once more. God had guided the ark to where he wanted to park it on the mountains of Ararat. Of course, much water still surrounded the ark and the mountains, but God had brought them safely through the great flood. The next morning, Emily woke to a knock on the door and she laid in bed for a moment, wondering what time it was. Sunlight was just beginning to slant through the window and illuminate parts of the floor. Acts chapter 5, we should obey God rather than men. Matthew chapter 6, no one can serve two masters. These are just a few of many passages that carried a powerful idea that right and wrong came from a law higher than any man, king, or priest. Allah. Well, hey friends, welcome back for another day here on the homestead. The boys and I are working through science and history today and Bible. Uh, like I said, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do science and history and it's kind of like our easier day. Like we, I still get up at the same time. So I still have quiet time in the morning before the kiddos wake up, but we just kind of know it's an easier day because the lessons are shorter, they're faster, and it's just not as labor intensive as regular curriculum, like math and language arts and even reading. So today we're working through that. I just made some lunch. We're just having tuna sandwiches today. I have uh, my homemade bread here that I've been sharing with you guys. So delicious. I make it with my grain mill. I mill the flour uh, right here in the kitchen with my grain mill and it's just delicious. I make two loaves a week and then I freeze one of them and put them in the freezer and we pretty much use two loaves a week, Joe and I and the boys, but it's just delicious. It's like home ground flour. There's nothing like it. It's more nutritious for you. Everything is still intact. It's not highly processed. So it's really good. If you guys have never checked out my uh, sandwich loaf recipe with home ground flour, which can also be made with regular store-bought all-purpose flour, check it out. I'll link that for you guys. But we're having tuna sandwiches today with some pickles. Like you can't have a tuna sandwich without a pickle or two on the side. And we are continuing work on the addition. And also Joe is working on siding in his hunting rifle right now because it is moose hunting season. So we are preparing to do a moose hunt here very soon. And you know, Joe and I were talking, he didn't even intend on, on hunting this year because this is our first official full year in Alaska, 2023. And we really had the goal of getting the shelters built for the animals, getting the chicken coop, the addition on the cabin, all the things structurally here on the homestead that we really needed. Our priority was to get that done this year. But of course, as we got closer to moose hunting season, Joe and I started looking everything up. Joe went and got his permit and uh, 
I think he's gonna give it a shot. So we might head out to the remote cabin. We've got some very active uh, moose tracks out there on the banks of the river and um, just head out there for a few days and have some fun with that. So if we do do that, we will be sure to take you guys along with us. Joe has successfully hunted bear and deer, but he's never been on a moose hunt yet. So even if we don't get anything this year, it's the experience, it's it's all of it. So we're gonna give it a shot and we'll be sure to take you guys along with us if we do that. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you thinking really hard? Do you remember how they, mammals feed their babies? No. With milk. Oh yeah, right? just like sheep. Yeah, they have mammary glands, so they feed their babies with milk, just like we do as humans. Very good. Okay, so I've got another question for you. Who yeah. can answer I what know every single one. an omnivore is? Callan, what's an omnivore? An uh, omnivore is something that eats the same thing. Oh, you're close. I think you're trying to say the right thing, but you're just saying the wrong word. Well, okay, so what does an omnivore eat? They eat two things, they eat both of them. What do they eat? They eat plants and they eat meat. Yes, good Some job. Bears. Yeah, okay, what about a baby ferret? Me. What is it? A ferret, so that's kind of like a weasel, huh? Kind of. Um. What do they call a baby one? It's, it's uh, similar to a rabbit. A kit. A kit, good job. What do they call? A baby goat. A kid. A kid. Good job. Formed within the uterus during pregnancy and that sustains the development, developing baby through the umbilical cord. Does anybody know where the hippopotamus lives? Mm -hmm. Callan, do you know? No. Parker? Um, Hawaii, I know that, right? Hawaii? No, Africa. Africa, good job. This one here, this is Africa. Okay, okay so you can put your hippopotamus anywhere in Africa. I'm gonna put it inside the water.
All right, friends, we're gonna get started on this beautiful fall garland, and we're gonna sip some yummy coffee while we do it. Joe was so sweet today, he cut the birch rounds for the boys' art project, and then he also cut these spruce boughs for me. Like I said, I got this idea from Pinterest, but the Pinterest one did not include the spruce boughs, and I personally just liked more color. I thought that the oranges against the green uh, spruce boughs would be really pretty so I went ahead and cut some of these now I will tell you I have never in my life done a garland like this so I really am shooting from the hip uh, Joe is helping me out with a few things here we're just putting some holes in the fruit because I'm gonna be putting some fishing line through these and that's how I'm going to attach them to the garland and these burlap bows I I just thought of this idea I just had a, a roll of burlap and you know they may not be the prettiest but they do kind of look like bows and I'm kind of going for the rustic cabiny look so you can't go wrong with that when you've got burlap <laughs> Now with the spruce boughs, I was like, how in the world am I gonna put these together? So I just found that, you know, you you want the ends of your garland to have the points of your boughs. So you don't want it to have just a chopped off like tree branch. So you want the ends to have the pointed edge of the spruce boughs. And I'm just putting these together with this twine that I have. And then, I, you know, I'm double knotting it so it's nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is use those cute little burlap bows that I made to place over these knots so that you can't see them. Now the kitchen window where I'm going to be placing the garland is only about three feet long so make sure you measure your space before you make your garland. Uh, so as you're putting this together, you can just keep adding the boughs to fill the empty spaces to make it as full as you want it to look. And then don't worry if you have some that are stragglers that kind of stick out and don't fit in because you can always go back after you're done and you can just snip those off. I know that some of you are probably like, seriously, Tina, it's barely fall. You're already putting up your decorations and you guys, that is just who I am. I absolutely love the fall season, the holidays. And so September 1st, the decorations for fall go up and you know, for Thanksgiving and then directly after Thanksgiving, everything goes up for Christmas. I love the holidays and I just love the cozy, warm feeling. I love family. And so yes, the decor is going up. So it turns out with our little tiny gas oven in the kitchen, anything that's placed on the bottom shelf will burn. I found that out today. <laughs> so I was actually going to throw these away, but then I started looking at the burnt ones and I'm like, you know, I kind of like it. It gives like a, a two-tone look to the garland. You've got the beautiful bright orange and then you have the darker brown. And surprisingly, they did not smell burnt. They smelled like cinnamon still. So I went ahead and kept them. I thought that it would look super cute to have the different colors on the garland. I'm just attaching the fruit to the garland with fishing line, double, triple knotting it, and then snipping the line. And you know, just have fun with this. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just look at it, see what looks good. If you've got a bare spot, stick another bow on there, stick another piece of fruit on there. It's really just, it's creative, it's fun. Turn on some lovely music, pour a cup of coffee, and just go to town and have fun with it. Now you guys know last winter we started a kitchen project and that was to do this cute little rustic ceiling like a you know open beam ceiling look in the kitchen. We have not finished that yet as you can see. So this section over here still needs to be done. That'll probably make for a perfect winter project. It's almost done so far super cute but it is not finished yet. <laughs>
Now you can keep your garland. I actually read that if you spray it and the fruit with hairspray, it helps to kind of preserve it. And if you put it in an airtight container when the season's over, you can use this more than one year. So that's pretty exciting. All of your work doesn't have to go to waste. Now, once you're done hanging your garland, just take a look at it, fill in any gaps with some more bows and fruit, snip any of the spruce you know, pieces that stick out and don't look good. And that's pretty much all there is to it. But I just think it's beautiful. And not only do you have the smell of the cinnamon and the fruit, you also have the smell of the spruce boughs, which is just heavenly. And I think it turned out super cute. I love the colors, the rustic colors, the neutral colors. I think it's absolutely adorable and just get you all fall vibey. I have to make a note here, friends. I have to give Joe some props and give him a shout out because every clip of Joe in this video, he filmed himself and I'm just super proud of him. He's like, you know, YouTuber over here and it's just really cute. He comes in with his little SD cards and he's like, here, babe, check this out. How does this look? And uh, I think it's neat. And with me being back in school with the boys, it sure is helpful that he's willing to pick up a camera and film some of the things that we're doing here on the homestead to share with you guys as well. What? I'm right here. What? Do you not like it when I talk about you as if you're not here? No, I'm just saying because you said that you're in here doing this and I'm out there doing that. But really, I'm not out there doing that. I'm right here. <laughs> I meant like throughout the day, Joe, not like right this moment. Get your stuff straight. Maybe. If you want to be on the video, that's all you have to say. Oh, I know. Go ahead. What? Say it. Say what? That you want to be on the video. The best. The best? Yeah. You are the best, John. <laughs> Especially when you get that addition done. Five. 20 times five. Zero times five is zero. Five times two is 10. That's not big enough because we need it to be 140, which is what we're trying to go into. So you need to go up from here. We're actually crying tears. We're laughing so hard, okay? So, <laughs> when you are learning to read, right? Like, you learn your vowels. They either say the short A, the long A, whatever. And then you have your letter blends, like FL says full, DR says dir. But sometimes you ain't got a blend. It's just an F, so the F says <laughs> Right? <laughs> So the word that we have been sitting on for like 15 minutes, I'm not gonna say it out loud because he still hasn't figured it out. F-A-C-E, okay? All right, Kellen. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. No, you can do it. We're gonna sound it out, okay? We've established there's no L, so we're not gonna say fool <laughs> again. It's just a <laughs> okay? <laughs> the A is not short, it does not say A. Uh, the A says A. Okay. So, let's try it. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, you're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> the A, the A doesn't say A, uh, remember? The A's long, it says A, okay? A. Put it together. Put it together, Callan. What'd you just say? Say it. Face. Face. 
<laughs> you got it! Your face! Good job! <laughs> uh, if I could show them how I use my French cup. So really quickly, I've actually... Whoa, what? Joe has successfully hunted moose and deer, but he's never been moose hunting. What? Boose. Did I say boose? Yeah. I did? Yeah. Is that like a cross between a moose and a bear? Joe's never hunted boose. We don't, we don't have boose here in Alaska, actually. 